I'm using a Blueberry uh, Express Recorder. It's a, um, a software from a company in uh, the UK, actually. And uh, um, Howard, I'm going to shut off your microphone because we're getting a lot of um, feedback from you. So if you want to talk, just go ahead and turn it on. Oh, it's still coming. Maybe it's someone different. So maybe it's not Howard, it's somebody else. Yeah, okay. Well, it looks like it was Leo. He turned his off, I think. Um, it's a Blueberry software, and it's a, it's a screencasting software. And so it is recording us right now. Um, so uh, as we play around with this, and let me see. So up at the, you should be seeing my screen. According to this, I'm sharing the screen. Pretty much everything. <laughs> hmm. It was and it's not. I don't know. Oh. And now you can't. Because my bandwidth is in the yellow. Now it's back in the green. Let's see. It does, I've, but <laughs> I'm new on it too. I, I know about as much as you guys, except that I've played with it this afternoon and a little bit before that. Uh, no, Chad is not accessible in full screen mode. Well, that sucks. Let's see. <laughs> so, well, there's, there's a... Yes, you can, you can make your chat go full screen, but I think he's talking about making the um, software full screen, and then uh, he loses the chat. Oh, you can see me now? All right. Excellent. Um, it looks pretty simple. This, um, these six little boxes up front kind of uh, control everything, but there's obvious there's more than one way of doing it too. The views and um, and then your options. Uh, these are your moderator options, so you can turn people off. If we get a bunch of feedback, that's what I did last time when there was a bunch of feedback. I just hit this close microphone button and it shuts everybody down even yourself so um, um, so the start takes us back to this I just a minute ago. Now it's back. Hmm. Now it's pretty cool. Up on the right by the little speaker. 
it pops up a name, I assume, of the person who's making the noise or talking. Uh, so maybe it just shows you when I'm in presentation mode. <coughs> or maybe it's going in and out because of bandwidth issues. Um, but uh, there's the, on the top there, there's the presentation video, which I've never seen work on anybody's webinar, so I, I don't know if I'd want to try it. Uh, screen sharing, the chat, and uh, the whiteboard. <laughs> um, it's been my experience that if you want to share a video, a, a link in the chat, and then let everybody go see it, it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, playing with the whiteboard worked pretty well in our practice. The screen sharing doesn't seem to be working too well, but um, when I went to presentation mode, once I got it, it seemed to work. Um, I can't remember how I did it again. Um, when you hit presentation mode, there's these activities comes up. Um, I clicked on that and then at the bottom of the activities box that pops up I added an activity and there's um, it may be because a lot of us have videos up that may be the bandwidth issue um, seen some uh, videos go in and out and I keep hearing myself echo <laughs> that delay comes back like so um I can try talking to people. I don't really know <laughs> the, the the company that this came from, but uh, I'll, I can ask. Um, so for usability, uh, these activities seem to be the 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 crux of it all. You you pull up the activities, then you can choose what activity you want, and then you can upload a file and that seems to be how it works Oops. but it does seem to have a maximum size of 40,000 kilobytes is that like so Is there anything special you want to see on this software, how to do anything? So, if you just hit poll, there's nothing there right now. So you have to go to the activities again and set set up a poll there. So you go to your activities 
go to the bottom of the pop-up window and go down to poll uh, you can name the poll and you could do these before people show up and let me see where is it oh yeah before you save it you have to click like the name pops up and then you can add a multiple choice uh, up to five different answers and then um, you can also do um, a text answer one You can do multiple choice where you can choose more than one box, and you can do a free um, <coughs> uh, a free text answer. So, so now I've created a couple of them, and let me go. If I start the poll, and now you should be able to participate. Somebody took it and then closed it on us. So, and then, <laughs> right, and then there's the multiple choice one. You can do a multiple choice where they can check more than one box, or they can check uh, only one box. So, there we go then. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, Susan came in. Hi, hey, Susan. Um, that's fine. Um, let me see. Yeah. Let me see if I can stop this sharing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put it into chat mode here. in chat mode, so that makes it a little better, but, um, I think. I have it kind of big right now, and it's, um, you know, I got your pictures, your, your videos in the middle, and then the chat screen's kind of big on the side. And now somebody went back. This is the start screen, I believe. Yeah, we're all moderators, so I think... Yeah. So that's why when you mess with something, you're messing with us all. <coughs> Um, you can share files and and then 
So then there's like a share file button at the top, so then people can download those, I guess. So, okay, I know, Christina, you got to go, and I, there's just a couple of things I wanted to, to say to uh, the, the facilitators, um, and that's, uh, if we can all register as participants, too, that would be nice, uh, because that'll be, um, you know, because we are participants, too, but, uh, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's not a big deal. I will send out some emails to all the groups through that, and that's where I pull the emails from. Um, if you're if you're going to be running a a topic or part of a topic, really, um, there's two big things that, that I hope you'll do. And, and one is, if you're going to present, that you choose a time to present, um, at least a month early, or try to do it about a month early, or the best you can uh, and then j just be ready and do that so you you can uh, I'll give you the um, the uh, password and all that for this so you can set up the room beforehand if you need to um, and maybe gather some initial resources we don't it's a connectivist MOOC so we don't want to give people uh, too many resources that they feel that they have to go through those, but a, a couple of resources to start with um, to, to share with them or maybe a, a quick blog post on, on whatever you think would be a good introduction to your topic. Um, if you can help out on the Twitter chats during that month, that would be great. Um, you know, if not, maybe uh, some ideas on some questions. Um, I do hope um, I, I was the two options I was thinking um, either um, one a week or maybe Twitter chats opposite the um, the live synchronous presentations so um, you know this is a, a really long program and I don't want to burn people out but then again um, <clears throat> like you're taking Christine you're taking open resources so that month can be you could really focus on that month and if you kind of fade in and out on the other months well then you know that's to be expected no, nobody can run 10 months full speed so um, you know and, and that's really the key if we take one or two people to say this month this topic we're gonna really work on and, and we'll be kind of in charge of this stuff that month then that uh, then the whole thing will run by, and, and uh, I think we can do that. Um, so, it might, you know, if people are, well, it's not really the, the people the participants it's, it's whether we can get people to work uh, facilitate a chat every week you know that would really you know uh, take up a lot of time I know it's an hour an, an hour for the chat and then a half an hour before preparing and a half an hour after maybe collecting uh, uh, archiving tweets or whatever so that can be a lot of work um, what do you guys think?
we have a uh, little over 50 signed up through our registration page and then uh, uh, my teachers haven't signed up yet and I've got I'm gonna talk to my boss next week and we're gonna uh, I really don't know how I'm going to get to our teachers. I'd like to do it during our opening presentations for school, which is in about two weeks. But uh, I don't know if they'll give me time there or not. I may have to hound them through email rather than in person, which would be a little less effective. But um, so yeah, yes, fifty people outside of my school have signed up. Yes. It it has been a lot more effective in the last couple of weeks. I know Michael did one at uh, an Ed Camp conference and he talked it up, and we got six or seven people there and. Um, the tweets have been retweeted more often, so um, yeah, I think you're right, Christine. So, <laughs> starting to tune in, right? Um, the other. Great. Good. Okay. Cool. Um, I just talked to Pete, and we're going to run a um, Twitter versus Zombies uh, second week in September. And he's actually got a, a, a couple of other classes. He's one of his classes, and then another professor. So we're going to have like three separate groups playing. So that should be interesting. Um, it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be, you know. <laughs> I, I, For, for my teachers in Illinois, I'm a registered um, professional development person, so I can, whatever sessions that I run uh, that people participate in, I can give them CPDU credits in Illinois. Um, so what Mike is doing in his and what we're doing in ours is our teachers at our school, um, when they participate, then I give them credit in my school, he gives them credit in his school, um, and we're, we're running it individually, like his is, he's actually paying his teachers $250 if they participate through the year, uh, and that's a, like a yearly stipend. Uh, for my teachers, if they participate for a week and uh, show some evidence of learning, then uh, we give them like three CPDUs and, and $28 for like an hour's worth of curriculum work. So they can do that, you know, up to a maximum of uh, 11 credits or something like that and $250 or something. So they can do little chunks in, in the topics they want. Um, so if you want to do something at your school, uh, I'm sure your somebody at your school has, uh, uh, you know, the authority to, to give out credits to the State Department and uh, and just have them do that. Have them set up their own, yeah, you participate in this, show me some evidence of learning, and then I can uh, I can give you credit for that. So. Sorry. Um, no. um, if you need, uh, if you want, I can give you my provider number 
in, in all the official stuff through um, the Illinois State Board of Education. And uh, if that helps any in your district to make it seem more official, I'm more than happy to, to do that. Uh, okay, so. Um, yeah, just shoot me an email or a Gmail message after. Sorry. I'm like, everything went black. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the screens just went to sleep. Yeah. Um, Usually this, well, you know, it's the state boards of education have their power of uh, deciding who can give professional development and, and who can't and, and what criteria they need to have. So you could check with your state. Um, if you have a local education board, I would check with that. Um, who, maybe your profession, if you have a professional development co coordinator in your school district, I would ask them. Um, and uh, but yeah, if it helps in any way, shoot me an email or a Gmail message or a G plus message or whatever, and uh, I'll send you my uh, uh, information from the state, my provider number, and, and uh, whatever works there. So. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to give out. I don't want to just say that I'm going to give out credit for this uh, because, right? I then I need to assess and evaluate it in some measure. But uh, you know, if you're saying the people at my school have done this and and, and I've seen them do this, then I'll I'll assume that you're trustworthy enough, and, and I'll put my word behind that. Um, you know, mm -hmm. right, and I would prefer it to be much better. I really prefer it to work that way. If, if this could be a framework uh, that districts in various areas said. Hey, let's all gather together and, and go through the same class, and then we'll evaluate the people in our district and, and give them credit where credit's due. There, I think it'd be a lot easier. Kind of that uh, DS 106. You know, they they all do DS 106, but there's like two or three different colleges that run separate but concurrent courses, and they all do the same work at the same place, and then each college grades their own students. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> throw the computer against the wall and it's done. Uh, meeting, top left. <laughs> um, all right, thanks, Christina. Bye. Um, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I was going to say that we do need mentors. That first month, we're gonna people are gonna be. Uh, I don't know what's going on or how to do this, and and so they'll need people to help them minor technical stuff. So how do I sign up for a blog? Okay, uh, so we do have a mentors page on, on the OOE 13 website and there's a Google form so you can just sign up there and then it'll show up. Um, 
that will be a big help in the first month or two. And then what I would say is go through the, the topics. Um, we've got September and October pretty well covered, and, and Christina has um, the open education resources one near the end covered. Um, in between there, it's a little fuzzy and hazy, uh, but if you pick a topic that you like and just go into that uh, planning document and see if there's stuff there, see if somebody has put their name up saying, I'm going to do the work on this one or I'm going to do some of the work on this one. And uh, if there's nobody there, then take it uh, and work with it. If somebody's already there, you can uh, add a message them some way or add a comment to the to the planning document saying I can help in this area these are the resources I have put the resources down there put your name at the bottom the the general um, uh, procedure would be if you have some resources you can put the resources in there put your uh, initials next to it and then at the bottom of the page your initials with your name so people know who put those resources on there. Or if you add a comment, it, it, it automatically puts your name above the comment so we know who made that. Um, but um, yeah, if you look at all the planning documents at the top, it'll have uh, who wants to take charge of this. And if there's a name there, you can tell them you're willing to help. If there's no name there, please put your name there and say, uh, all right. I got this. You'll see on a lot of those documents there are suggestions of maybe we should talk to this person but uh, uh, it may not have been done yet. So <clears throat> in uh, if at MOOC is any um, how they say uh, like canary in a coal mine there a lot of their topics really came came together at the last minute you know it was there were suggestions up there maybe a month or two months beforehand and then uh, it was three days before the presentation they were going oh I called so and so and they'll they're gonna do a, an hour and then I'll monitor the Twitter chats and uh, and uh, so that's the way that goes um, I think that's yes It will be. Um, I for the participants. I think if they miss September, um, and they've never been in a MOOC before, constructivist MOOC, it will be difficult for them, but not impossible. Um, but I don't want to say if you miss September, you'll f be fighting an uphill battle because then that might discourage people from coming in March. Um, <clears throat> yeah. September's, yeah. Yeah, we can, yeah. September's our welcome month and we want everyone to get to know each other and say hi. Um, and so yeah, I think we'll, maybe, maybe we'll put, um, in our first post that uh, uh, the first month getting to know people really can set the tone for your learning for the year and so it's important to jump in on this one and, and be involved and get started a strong start so um, <coughs>
Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that's the way a lot of people see it is, you know, this is a great way to, to um, start getting involved and, and, and expand that, um, uh, expand that personal learning network so they can, um, and uh, as the faci facilitators, it's, um, it's really going to be important for us to comment on a lot of blogs, especially in that first month, um, to respond to Twitters, uh, to just say hi to people and make them feel welcome, um, because they, it's, it's really that response. When you first start reaching out, when you start getting a couple of responses, you're like, oh, people are listening. Uh, you know, this isn't, I'm just, I'm not shouting into the wind, so... Um, so that's one thing we want to make sure we do as, as the facilitators and the mentors. Um, <coughs> so that's, uh, that's about it. We've been here for an hour. Um, we've got a chance to play with the software. Um, <laughs> please get involved in, in any, and really don't feel bad if you're out of touch with with the group for a while because you know life takes over but uh, if there's one topic that really uh, is your passion or, or, or something that you really or even something that you want to learn about then go ahead and get involved in that one topic uh, really well and, and that will be if you spend one month really hardcore as a facilitator on a topic then, then that will be more than enough. Uh, we've got a, hopefully we've got 20, 30, uh, we've got 28 in the, in the Google Plus group this time around, and we had 61 last time. So, you know, if that's, uh, if, if half of us get active for one month, then, then this thing will run smooth as, smooth as pie, so. Um, someone brought up the fact that uh, it wasn't open, um, <coughs> and uh, and they were trying to pull some other people in, but they couldn't do it. If you had a conversation in the other community and you thought, oh, this other person would really w have some good insight, uh, you couldn't plus them into the conversation. Uh, you had to invite them to the group, and so so. Right. So the, the private ones will, no, nobody can even see what's going on in there th until they're invited in. In uh, the open one, but moderated, people can read our conversations that's going on, but they uh, can't comment unless they're uh, either invited in or they can ask to join. So, um, <coughs> and then the the one for participants is, is open to anybody, so they don't even have to really ask to join. They just come in and, and they're part of it. Um, so, and then there's a fourth closed one where uh, they can't even search for your group. It's, it's closed, they can't see it, they can't search for it, they have to be invited in to find it. It was mostly me. Uh, I took them from uh, Edmook, kind of, and, and I changed a few. And uh, some people gave their input when we first started, because really I started this with the topics. Uh, and as we first got going, uh, a couple of people made suggestions, especially the, the student-directed student one. Uh, that was originally... Um, digital stories of 
but someone said student direction would be a student directed learning is a lot better. Um, <coughs> but no, it was it was me. So um, you know, we we might I might end up doing this again next year because originally with our tech development plan at my school district, this was uh, a four year thing because we're. We're giving students, the freshman students, this year Chromebooks, and then next year the, the incoming freshmen will get Chromebooks. So um, as this first group of students goes through the ranks, I'm working with specifically those, uh, those teachers. So this year I'm working with the freshman teachers, and next year I'm working with the sophomore teachers more. Uh, more. Uh, so I, I hope maybe I'll run this again next year. But the topics I hope will be slightly modified. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, so if you have, uh, if we finish this this year and it's really successful and we do it, do it next year, please. Uh, <laughs> ideas on topics will be great. Um, uh, it will be uh, really appreciated. So, do you guys have any? Other questions? Um, I forgot who gave it to me right offhand. Yes, is Verena had a contact, and it got me the the uh, account. So, uh, and I don't know actually how she got it, but uh, <laughs> so she, yeah, she. I asked one day, and she said, "Let me see if I can get you this." And next thing I know, I got an email saying, "Good afternoon, Brendan. We have set you up an account on this." And so. And uh, it's really great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anything else we can say before we go? Oh. <laughs> okay. I hope I'm not getting her in trouble then. <laughs> so. It's really nice software, so I like it. So you're going to be our technical help then, right? <laughs> we'll see. Excellent. This is much better. I was going to make my tech director set up a, a separate server in the in our school district and run it. But if we got more than thirty or forty people in a in a session, 
that would be really taxing on, on an old computer from a school district. So. so well, we'll see. If, and if it doesn't work, then we'll figure something else out. But I think it works pretty well here, and we've all been running video. So um, if we have one presenter running video and, and a bunch of people watching, I think it should run pretty well. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I appreciate the help and uh, we'll see you in the uh, community later on. Okay. Thanks, Rhonda. <coughs> and did it record?